It's your boy and JJ Stone, aka Black Grady. Welcome to another episode of Grady Nights. And let me tell you something: uh, the Phillies are great. They're going to be fine. We're just trying to get past the All Star game. We're not going to talk about that much tonight. Uh, you know what it is? It, it is what it is. Uh, the Flyers are, are are making moves. I don't know if they got a direct line to Putin or what, but it seems like a lot of releases are coming out of Russia, and we can appreciate that because nobody else thought that they could get these guys. Like when you think about, oh, well, could he be that good? Is he that great? He went seventh. Well, you went seventh because they thought they're going to stay in, in Russia for three years, mm -hmm. and so they made that leap. And guess what? Like I said, they got that Putin uh, speed dial button going, and I don't know the bad phone's working, but it seems like dudes are coming over early, so there is a lot of hope and Flyer Nation, but we're not going to really talk about that at all today either. And the Philadelphia Eagles or the Philadelphia Eagles, or we might touch on Jalen Hurts just a little bit, but nobody cares about that. We're going to talk tonight about the Philadelphia 76ers and the rest of the NBA for most of the night. If you got a problem with that, shut the LL Cool J up and just hang out for a little <laughs> bit anyway, because it is what it is. So uh, tonight, I'm going to bring this guy back on. Oh, oh, now you want to throw back up, Barry? Oh, oh yeah. You know I mean, you trying to uh, uh, talking about this. Shut up. Shut up like you're here. Jason. Hey, I wanted to announce I re-signed with the show, by the way. Okay, buddy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Deal. Thank you. Okay, I appreciate there it. it is. There it is. So um oh, man. we are gonna talk about the Sixers. And before we talk about the Sixers at all, uh, I just need confirmation and head nodding from you guys. So I am generally negative about the 76ers i've also been right for the last decade about the 76ers i was hyped for ben simmons i had ben simmons vision.com ben vision.com i had the twitter hand i was all ready to go i had hopes i had dreams i i believed in the process i didn't believe in brett clown i didn't believe in the clan of clowns i didn't believe in elton brand I saw a lot of things. I didn't like Fultz pick. You know why? Not because I didn't know the Fultz was going to fall apart. I had no clue. I just know that Danny Ainge is the devil. And anytime you do a deal with the devil, I'm getting the short end of the stick. That's all that I knew. But time after time, for the last 10 years, can you two confirm when I was having to go to Twitter to check that in general, I have been right. Even when I try to be positive and I've been wrong, I've accepted I've been wrong. But in general, everything I've come to bear, it, it, it pans out, right? Yes. Sadly. <laughs> right? Sadly. Yes. Now, it's been a miserable, it's miserable uh, few, few years, obviously. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, we, and, we, and we've had fights between Yeah, them. yes. You guys are, are positive and hold on to it a little bit longer than I do, where I'm like, uh, I can't, I can't do it. Like, I just, I, I'm a people person. I just go in my eyes and I, I can't. I've also been hurt a lot. You know what I mean? So it is what it is. But at the same time, I get why people are excited. I, I'm going to let Harry go. We're going to talk about the joy and the happiness and the hope. I don't have it. <laughs> but I know why people have it. I fully understand. So Harry, the the dude that almost lost his spot on this show because he <laughs> in and left me and Jason in the lurch. We out here fighting for our lives. Oh my Harry, god! Enjoying his summer breeze. <laughs> Harry feels fine. Get your ass back. <laughs> but yo, you show up on happy we happy day. You know what I mean? Oh, we we done got some draft picks. We out here TikToking. You know what I mean? <laughs> The Sixers, they send the bad signal, basically, for yeah, me. Yeah, and now, now all of a sudden, Harry wants to get over here. Oh, yeah, oh, oh, that, that Eskin talk. Okay. <laughs> I see the comments. I'm not able to get You know what I mean? Before we, get, before we get to the spicy talk. That's for later in the night. Oh, mm -hmm. later. I mean, we might not have to do it too late tonight. You know what I mean? So, yeah. <laughs> I ain't trying to get no harassment charges. Exactly. I, I, need, I need the light of day. I need, I need Yes, the yes. I need witnesses. I need witnesses. <laughs> Look, it is what it is. Oh, speaking of harassment, Kate, I sent Jason home with a bowl of my spaghetti and meatballs. Did you eat that spaghetti and meatballs, Jason? She, no, I did not eat it. I know she I'm fat, I did not eat it. Okay, so you <laughs> ate it, Kate, and I ain't getting no text messages. I, ain't <laughs> you know, I still leave my man for you nothing. I, I, I'm expecting a whole gym. She, I mean, Is that what it's like over there? Right? Say, look, yeah. look, Kate. <laughs> I'm just saying, as far as harassment goes, I was expecting to be harassed a little bit when I sent home a little bowl of love for you, okay? okay. I, 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 uh -huh. Good Jason, to know. Oh, wait, Jason's still here. My bad. Yeah, hey. So, uh, <laughs> the Sixers. <laughs> Harry, let's, I mean, let's yes. get focused, Harry. Let's, yes, yes. let's, get, let's, let's get lock in. 
together. Tell Absolutely. me how you feel, Harry. How do Maury do? How you what are you doing, Harry? <laughs> What's going on? Tell us. I'm 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 back, baby. I'm back in. I'm back in hopeful land. You know what I mean? I think I was in the I was in the mindset of like kind of interested in PG to start free agency, start the offseason. Then I kind of got talked out of it, I feel like, by everybody in the world, you know, basically talking about how he's way off P and play off P who doesn't show up and stuff like that. But that's what guess what? We only have the options we have, okay? We only had the situation we could get. And I think as far as the players out there are concerned, as far as the players bringing back that we, you know, like Ubre getting Drummond back, obviously is exciting. It's not just about getting PG. It's about like, it looks like we're actually trying to go all in, stack our roster. And it is what it is. Like we can't get everyone we want, but I think we're getting the best players available for our fit and for our team. So yeah, it's all about Joel and being healthy. But again, these guys know their roles. Maxi going to take another leap next year. PG, you know, he, he, <laughs> I don't necessarily believe the talk, but he said he woke up the bully or something. He says he hears the noise right on his podcast and then he woke up the bully. I'll believe it when I see it. But again, he has been a great you know, two-way player. So it, it fits well. And I, I want to win, man. I want to win. I don't want to be like, well, look at the team. We don't look good. These are the reasons why we're going to lose. There are reasons why we might win. And the main reason is Joel's health. But I, And that being said, Drummond coming back to back him up, these other stars on the team, Maybe he can just play less than the regular season and kind of hang in there towards the playoffs. So obviously we need to do everything we can to keep him healthy. But I mean, there's no reason not to be excited a little bit. I mean, you know, maybe other than the past, like you're going to tell me. But I think that there's, you know, if you're a basketball fan, why not? Why not look at this as a positive? Jason. Hey, anytime you can sign the only option available to you and give him the maximum amount of money when he has more <laughs> options, you should definitely do that, by the way. So what does he mean I woke up the bully now? Like, he's 35 years old. What the hell has he been waiting for this whole time? Like, that's confusing to me. Yeah. And, uh, you know, drumming back, Gordon, like, we're definitely the favorites to win the 2020 championship. I will tell you that. <laughs> but, <laughs> but uh, J- Jason, are, are you happy with Maury's moves? He's made other moves, too, Jason. I mean, it's okay. What He hasn't done anything. I was hoping... When we when Maury came here, I was expecting some genius that unearthed all these hidden talents and all that. And all he's doing is paying the best guy. He doesn't do anything special. He doesn't find anyone. I was hoping to find some, you know, secret player on the free agent market that we could sign here. And everyone's a little confused why we got him and he comes here and blossoms. And instead, we're just getting old players, you know, another former rocket, even though it's a good deal. And then Paul George is, you know, he's Paul George. He's good. So this for the viewer, this is you got the greatest panel available to you. (laughs) You got high school Harry with the pom poms. He's he's <laughs> rock and roll for you. You got apathetic Ferg in the middle. Jason's like, man, we do or we don't. I just, I'm, I'm here, okay. Drink in my hand. I showed up. Don't ask me to dance, bitch. But I, I'm here, okay. <laughs> and, <laughs> right? You know what I mean? He, like I said, you, you can get him going. You know what I'm saying? He's here. And then you got me over here. This is the same exact, and I made my video, and I, and I poked the bear. People got so upset because I'm like, Derek <laughs> Coleman, Chris Webber. That one hurt. Uh, oh, it did hurt. <laughs> uh, uh, um, Elton Brand, uh, Al Horford, like all these old guys that were just going to come in and change the narrative. But the real one is, the real gem is, the Hall of Famer James Harden coming to the 76ers being the key to unlike Joel Embiid in the playoffs to help be the third star. So when people come to me and say these dumb things, well, would you rather have to buy his Harris? You're a piece of shit. And that's not a real <laughs> argument. Shut the fuck up. James Harden, on the other hand, is exactly what Paul George is a perennial all-star guaranteed hall of famer shows up three or four games in the playoffs and then dies in 70% of the other games and has never reached the mountaintop of even being in the finals. They're literally the same guy. When James Harden came here, we went from a top five, 10 team to a top three team contending for a championship. As far as Vegas was concerned, you get Paul George. We hadn't filled out the roster yet. 76ers three and the contender. Okay. Perennial Hall of Fame. Okay. All I know is that he is way off P, and he does show up sometimes. But guess what? He also has the problem of having a podcast. There are 91 of you in here watching this shitty podcast, and I love you so much, and I appreciate each and every one of you. I appreciate each one of you that are listening, that downloaded, that take the time. I love you to death. But Paul George has got millions of people listening to his dumb ass, and what does he say? Well, you go out there, you try, you try, you do your best, you pray, pray, and you go do it. You know why? Because he's already made $500 million. He just made $200 million more. So with that kind of attitude, telling me you woke up the beast for what? 
I didn't get him from Indiana. I didn't get him when he went to OKC. I didn't even get him when he went to the Clippers. I'm getting him at the last stop on the train in the OK Corral. And he has never shown that he could do anything different than James Harden. So when people ask, well, what would you do? Well, that's also a moot point, too. I, I'd, I'd rather have traded some assets away and got Ingram, who's 24 years old, and has the same general stat line as Paul, as Paul George, but doesn't have the history of failure. At least there's hope in that because you don't know what he's going to do. Because now I have Joel Embiid failing in the playoffs. He's rubbing that off on Maxi because Maxi's the only one that ever seemed to fight and care and cry. And now I got Paul George who's like, well, you know, he's trying to rest, and it's okay if we lose. I need a dog. Get, get Pat Beverly back in here. Get, a, get both the Morris twins back up in here. Get me somebody who will scream and yell and fight and care. I don't care that they suck. I just need more passion. I need more fire on this team. And last thing I'll say is, Daryl Morey is a fucking loser. Of course anybody can sign the highest paid guy, and every other person he's brought here has been a fucking rocket, and the Rockets <laughs> never won anything. I, I kind of like Gordon. That's fine, but guess what? He's old and, and, and going to do a serviceable backup job, you hope. He's not washed. But even coach Nick Nurse, the dude that I like, he was in the G League assistant coach for the Rockets. Yeah. <laughs> pick up anybody to come and work for him that hasn't already previously worked for him. Because once the people that worked for him realized who he was, nobody else wanted to work with the guy. Mm -hmm. So it is what it is. Clap your hands, everybody. 76ers <laughs> are going to win the championship this year. Yes, clip it. Save it. I mean, it's not about that. It's about, like, I don't expect us to win the championship necessarily, but it's like we are a better team, and Joel has a better chance of being healthy now with the roster. Okay. So at the end let, of the day, that's the reason. Let, let, let's let's do that next. Let's do that next. Yeah, yeah. What are your expectations for the playoffs? What would make you happy? It would make me happy if Joel goes into the playoffs healthy, because then I believe we can, and I, I'm saying that's conducive with having this extra star and this extra, yeah. extra players in the regular season to get us there and just be be healthy to go in the playoffs. And I believe that, you know, we can we can make it to the conference championship at least. So I expect us to make it to the conference finals. So Eastern Conference Finals. Yeah, so Eastern. assuming Joel's health for sure. They should be a three or four seed and they'll probably lose in the second round like they have forever and ever. So, just perennial in the second round loss. I'm, I'm asking what would make you happy? What would make you feel complete? Oh, a parade. Okay. Only a parade. Yeah, that's not why make, we've been doing all this for uh, all this time. Uh, uh, like, right? Again, again, you do the whole step thing process, right? So, okay, so for you, it's, I it's championship it, or bust. Win that okay. I, mean, I want to win too, but again, like we have PG for four years, assuming like that he's whatever he is this year. I, I don't expect like a cliff drop off for any of these players at this stage. I, don't know what that is. I mean, it's, it's the, I'm okay. just saying it's the NBA now, modern modern sports in general. Like these guys play till they're 40 all the time. It doesn't no. matter if you're LeBron or if you're anybody. So I think that. I just think that these guys can, you know, there's not going to be a cliff drop off of athleticism and stuff like that. Have you taken up crack cocaine? <laughs> what are you talking about? How many, how many 40 year olds are playing tennis and all these sports that you could never make it past 26? I'm just saying it's like a completely there's different era. Any 40 year olds playing NBA basketball. I know, but he's not, I was like, 40s, the 40s, the, the hyperbolic, whatever, like the term I was, you know, the, 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 the anchor point. I'm not saying 40. You like, can't say that though. He's 35. He's 35. He's, you know, I mean, it's not 40. I'm just saying like he has a few years. So. My, my thing is, if you get me to the finals, I'd be content. Give me a chance in the big dance, and I'm like, yo, at least we got here. You didn't quit on me. You didn't fail. You know what I mean? Anything happens in the finals. You know what I mean? Like, shoot, my, my goat went there 22 times. He only came out with four. It happens. But I'm saying get there and give me that chance. I'll be happy. I'll be content with that because at least I had a shot to get the championship. That's where I'm at as far as joy is concerned. Then the, the next thing is – the 76ers have a two-year window. That's it. You got this year and you got next year with Paul George. I, I don't know what he's going to be like at 37, 38. I don't know what Joel Embiid's going to be yeah. like in two more years in the third season. You know, again, we're all we're all conducing this on health. If Joel Embiid's healthy, I mean, he's King Kong. I'm putting up a, I'm putting him up against pretty much anybody. Yeah, for real. Healthy, but he hasn't been. Yeah. So with that being said, this is a two-year window of time that they've got to – Get there. So again, this year, get me to the finals, and then if you don't win it next year, get me back to the finals and win. That that's your window. That that's the, that for me. Sorry, I'm not I'm not fucking god. That that's my realistic window. <laughs> if you go down, I know sometimes like we all talk like we're saying our, our definite points, but yeah. the internet is such crybabies today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can't say anything. I was like, bitch, you have you, say your opinion. You you can have an opinion. It's fine. Tell me I'm wrong. It's fine. I have no problem being wrong. Yeah. I've been right for a decade. Yeah. Do you think it makes me happy saying I'm right? I mean, it's fun to laugh at you, but it also <laughs> makes me sad because I am a Sixers fan. I want to jump ship so bad, but I can't. For Apparently, I like suffering. Jason brought it up, too. 
We are horrible parents. We got our kids <laughs> out here suffering. You know what I'm saying? Come out here. I don't know, man. Come on now. Like, I love being a Sixers fan. I love being a fan of teams in this city. I mean, you don't have to, like, getting into sports fandom just to root for the team that's the champion is why we shit on every bandwagon kid that grows up being a company Yankees or Lakers fan. So I just feel like be happy to be a sports fan a little bit. That's part of it. It, It's not just winning. It's not about just winning. It's about fucking hope, bro. Of course. And there's hope. There's now hope that we didn't have. A little a smidge, a smidge more. I'll take it. I'll take it. James Harden hope. No, it's the James Harden. See, listen, that I understand what you mean about the comparison with play, play you know, Paul Paul George, but it's like James Harden is an offensive, you know, hold the ball. That's it. I'm just saying Paul George is a three and D guy. Like it's completely different. Who do you different wow. fit? I'm completely different fit. I'm just saying James Harden's not gonna hold the ball. I mean, Paul George isn't gonna hold the ball and not give it to Embiid for a whole game six of like, you know, that's not gonna happen with Paul George. I used to be able to dunk the ball in high school. I wasn't slam a jamma, but I could dunk the ball. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I could. Uh, that's like me saying I could dunk. I, 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 oh, yeah. I, I could dunk. No, bitch. I used to be able. You to said dunk. Paul George and James aren't exactly the same. That's all I'm saying. They're not exactly the same. They're not exactly the same. Their, their name lives off of old prowess. I saw 42 different people posting Paul George highlights, and every single one of them was in yellow and black. I'm like, bitch, it might as well be in black and white. He was nice in OKC. Come on, now that's M- MVP. <laughs> About the internet, bro. I'm I know, I know, I know. Fans right. putting up highlight packages I got you. of Paul George dominating in yellow. So again, living off your old hype. Three and D. Guess what? I saw him out there in the West getting smoked by the John Morans, the Luca Doncic, the most <laughs> white man in America. I mean, he does forget everybody, but still. Where's the D at? I, Did you I, see, I see a couple of way off threes? You Where's see the, the D? Okay. You see the Paul Pierce, the Paul Pierce uh, KG video where he's saying, you know, Paul George is like the security guard. You know what I'm saying? He got the handcuffs. You know what I mean? <laughs> KG, Kawhi's like, get on the ground, get on the ground. Like, so again, that's what PG is. He's he's security guard. Come on now, that's okay. He, he's a pat him down and go security. Tobias guy. is a Tobias is the guy that did just this, you know waves in the air. So I'm just saying, <laughs> we're improved. <laughs> it's not about him. Yeah, don't say his fucking name. It's don't about improving. We're improving. Yeah. Tobias Harris was fourth on that system with James Hardy. He, he doesn't even equate to coming into the conversation. Right. He's not on the fucking team. We understand why he got paid. But telling me that Paul Jordan is better than Tobias Harris doesn't do a fuck all for anybody. He's gonna fit. The, he's gonna play the same role. He's gonna play defense and get rebounds and shoot threes. Like he's gonna play a very similar role to what we wanted Tobias to do. What we wanted Tobias. To do. Tobias didn't do it often, but I'm just saying, like what we want that person to do: play defense on the tough on tough forwards, knock down wide open threes. Like what else is there? Can Can we also agree that while he was here, to be honestly fair to James Harden, because he was trying to get paid, he was playing defense. He was getting steals. He was he was following guys around. He was making full effort in the playoffs. When when Joel Embiid went down and all hope was lost, who put up two forty five plus point games? James Harden. <laughs> what that about when Joel came back? What about when he came? <laughs> go look. Go look at the stats, and look at Paul George and what he's done. Guess what? Oh, they went to the Eastern the Western Conference Finals without Kawhi. Yeah, but you know who the star that was? That guy, that kid Anderson, that rookie. He nah, was Paul going. George had some good games during he, those. No, series. no, no. I'm not saying he didn't. I'm saying some forty point games. He, I'm, I'm not saying. Right, I, yeah. I just that's what I just said. Right. Just like James Harden, he he showed up and had a couple of those games. Mm. But also, Anderson was going off like nobody knew what the, like what this kid was on like steroids. He disappeared after that season because once <laughs> Kawhi came back, it took his time away. But he was out there balling out, helping Paul George. And yes, like I said, mm. Paul George is just like James Harden. He can give you the forty plus game here and there. But then when the pressure gets on this game six or seven, Paul George put up nine points. Paul George is one for 15. And you're like, how is that humanly possible? I mean, apparently Tobias Harris can do it every night. But how is it possible <laughs> for somebody like Paul George with the resume and the, and the calendar that he has to do it too? Because he's just like James Harden. He's older. He's got spurts in him. And you hope that those spurts come at the time when you need them the most. But again, for me, it doesn't matter at all unless we keep – Joel and beat in bubble wrap and bring him yeah. out uh, when 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 the time is right. So Drummond, Drummond could be the biggest signing. You know, having a legit backup. Okay, let's, let's let's talk about that. Because so, Paul Reed is you know obviously that was nothing. Paul, Reed, so. Paul Reed's out. They got they got they got the dude I want to exactly. bone you. And uh, they got. <laughs> so oh wait, harassment. I gotta watch what I'm saying. Uh, <laughs> I gotta watch what I'm saying. They want to bone. Uh, anywho, <laughs> they got him. They got the bone. 
Got so um, they're, they're going to be doing uh, Paul, Paul George is legitimate three. That's better than Harden in terms of, it, I mean, it, spot up. We, God, Jason, pull up the stats. Harden is not a – he's a volume three-point shooter. Paul George has been a better three-point shooter his whole career. You can pull up the stats. Go ahead. What's that? Somebody, what do you want? What do you want? What do you want? Just Google hard. We know Paul George is a better three point shooter. They play different styles. It's, you know, you know my favorite with. thing too is, is like, because we're going to start talking about the other teams in the league. Is like, um, uh, somebody put up the stat of the not stat, the players of Mikel Bridges versus Paul George, and it's like, Paul George is way better than Mikel Bridges. I'm like, well, first of all, he's supposed to be because he's a nine time All Star. Yeah, <laughs> never been an All Star, so that's not a flex. But then on top of that, when you look at it. Three point percentage. Oh, Paul George is like two point two points better in percentage wise. Free throws, <laughs> he's seven points percentage better. And field goal percentage, he's three point percentage better. I'm like, when you actually look at the numbers, yes, all your numbers are all right. green and grayed out for, for Paul George. But when you actually look at the numbers, it's like point two, point yeah. three, <laughs> three point. Like it, like, bro, it's not that much difference. All right, what stats do you want? We got points per game career. What do you want? What do you got here? Points no. per game. Points rebounds, per game. Harden 24.1. Paul George 20.8. Rebounds per game. Harden 5.6. Paul George 6.3. One difference. Assists per game. Harden 7.1. Paul George 3.7. Two times as much. Steals. Not per as game. Paul George 1.7. James Harden 1.5. He just Block swipes the shit. Paul George 0.4. James Harden 0.6. So. Oh, so the numbers yeah. are very. So similar. the numbers. Oh, so the numbers. Is that? Are you saying that we should go off of that completely, hundred percent? Like that's no. what we're doing. No, I'm, Come not, on, I'm, not, I'm not saying that completely. Wrong. I'm saying, in general, they're the same player. They're all star players. They're very good players that disappear in the biggest moments in the playoffs, which is what they have both done in their careers. They're, they're very similar. They're, I understand. So I understand. But there's 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 key there's key differences also. Like there's one thing about Harden is I never believed he was gonna fully give the reins to Joel ever. I knew it was a contract year. I knew he was an audition for his next you know max contract or, or buying and getting to another team. Of course, I think a lot of us understood that. And Paul George is not gonna come here and think that he's the man low key behind the scenes. And you know, I mean, he knows. Joel's the man. I think that we're going to have that, you know, be a huge factor. And he's also going to recognize Maxi as a dog in a way that Harden probably did, but Harden can't help himself, man. He can't help himself holding the damn ball and wanting to be the hero and then just dribble, dribble, dribble and shooting some bullshit. So it's a different style. It's a different style. I do think style of plays are completely different. For they, both of them. they are completely Stats different. That's why they're similar. Styles of play are completely, completely different. different. I, I, again, I, I don't like James Harden, but I'll also say, he had the best assist that he's ever had in his career when he was here with Joel Embiid and Max. Yeah, I mean, I hope he would pass to damn Joel Embiid. But, he, but, he, but, uh, but my, that's my point. He didn't go dribble, dribble. No, Houston no, Martin. not until the end. Not until the end. Was, he, again. But he did keep the ball out of Maxie's hands, though. Yes, he, he did. Show. That, that's true. So that's the assumption. If you're hoping Maxie takes another leap like it seems like he's prone to do every year, then you hope it fits better. And that's also a problem with the, the terrible coach that we had, well, who how he was running yes, the game. How he was running the game. So, um, yeah, hopefully this is like new, new, new toys for Nurse to play with, and he kind of you know steps up like we he didn't really last year in the ways that we you know want him to. So I hope he you know makes some changes, mixes it up. Hopefully we sign Terry, uh, Terry Payne. I don't know if you saw that campaign, the whole thing. He gave like a false name because he just didn't want to rat on random stuff. I don't even know what he had to do with it. But. Also, we're gonna need a new rule, by the way. I'm gonna we're gonna need employee twenty five and employee twelve when we mention Simmons and Harris. We can't say that. That's name. fair. That's fair. Like I just got, no more. They don't deserve I, it. I, I just, I just, like, I can't. Like bullshit and tuberculosis. Berkey <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> got that Berkey on him. Um, so somebody in the comments just said the Trey uh, went Yizard. Um, he hit an outer Wrigley. Oh, that's that's nice. That's Back, nice. baby. Let's Trey, go. Shiesty, Trey Shiesty. Yeah, you know I mean, Let's like go. I said, the, the, the Phillies are fine. Like all the yeah. worry. I believe in Dombrowski. Like, yeah, you know I mean, they're gonna do what they gotta do. They're gonna make these moves. I have no worries. Harper was jogging. We're having somewhat staggered. I mean, Trey's back. I know a bunch of other people got hurt, but like, it's a little bit staggered, thankfully. Yeah, yeah you know what I mean. There's a lot of accountability going on out there in these streets, so we gotta make sure <laughs> that we stay accountable. You know what I mean? Trey yeah. Shiesty out here doing his work, earning his keep. But um, so let's talk about uh, let's talk about the Knicks real quick. So mm -hmm. I, I did bring up McCall. Well, you brought up McCall, and we were talking about that. So that move. <laughs> Oh my God! We broke that at the end of our show last week. We did, we did. Oh yeah! Also, shout out to Jason because uh, <laughs> last week on the show you did say that they were gonna uh, um, draft Jared McCain. We'll run back to that later. We'll talk about that later on the show. Mm -hmm. You did call that, and I said what was gonna happen when they drafted him, and yep. I was right about that. We so we correct. both yeah. called. Um, but uh, as far as the Knicks are concerned, the Mikel Bridges thing, I'm like, this is when 
I think to myself, to people that are so, you can't trade Joel. What are you going to get for him? And then I bring up the Rudy Gobert thing. Well, that's never going to happen again. Nobody's that dumb. Are you sure? <laughs> are you sure? There's always somebody. Because I just saw the Knicks give up somebody's house, three children, a pony, and draft picks and players for Mikel Bridges. Now, again, it hurts us because we let him go and we should have had him and all those things or whatever. But it's just insane that the haul they got for that guy. You, you, if, if I trade Joel Embiid, I need the world. I need I need oh, your yeah. porn. I need everything. And, and, and you could get it from somebody for Joel. If, if this kind of trade is happening for uh, KD, for Mikel Bridge, is like, I'm tired of hearing the people say, well, you can't trade Joel. What are you going to get for him? You're going to rebuild your whole life for, with Joel Embiid. So that's why, again, I think you got that two-year window because at some point they, they will have to move on and, and, and flex that muscle. I'd hate to see him win somewhere else, but, you know, we're not, we're, we're not there yet. But as yeah. far as the Knicks are concerned, uh, how much better do you think the Knicks got, Jason? Uh, I don't think they got as much better as everybody talks. I know that it's cool that they all went to Villanova and everything, but now they got to fit in another guy who – uh, in Brooklyn, I guess he was the first option there. He's really a, like what a third or fourth option. Yes, and they, slide back they brought uh, OG and an OB back. Who you know, he might as well have been a sixer with how often he gets hurt. So uh, you know, that's another. And they paid they paid the hell out of him. Yeah, that did. crazy did. contract. But uh, I think the Knicks, you know, they're relying a lot on Brunson to be the main player in their offense. And after the minutes that Tibbs puts on those guys, you don't usually see them come back the next year and play as good. So, Harry. Well said. Well said. No, I totally agree. I mean, it's, you know, Hardenstein getting, you know, not, of course, that contract that he got is crazy. So, but I mean, not having that big and kind of having Randall come back, which for me is like, I don't know how, again, I talked to my Knicks fan friends and I think they're very like, it depends on how Julius is playing, probably how they feel about him. But ultimately, I feel like he doesn't fit with anybody almost like I feel like he's a guy that takes bad shots. He has one direction. He goes left handed all the time. You always know he's going to do. And I feel like he just kind of disrupts the flow of what that sort of style of offense could be with all those Nova guys. So to me, it's just they're going to lose a little bit of rebounding. Obviously, they're going to crash the boards. But again, how much can their health sustain? The challenge now is Mikel Bridges, you know, the Iron Man playing 83 games at 82, you know, two years ago, going against Tibbs now and how many minutes he's going to play. So again, they improved Mikel's you know, I, I think before this year, you could have made an argument that he was the best of the bunch, even over Brunson. Um, so I think it's very exciting to see them together. But also, it's just the Knicks trying to have fun with their fan base and get the Nova guys together. I mean, they can't win with that. So not that much better. So I've already cussed a lot on this show, and I apologize for those who are sensitive to that. But fuck the New York Knickerbockers and anybody <laughs> that came into town with. They're assholes, and they suck at life. And if Joel yeah. and you didn't have Bell's palsy, you would have got fucking dog mm. walked out here. <laughs> so next Bell's year, palsy. That's not even a joke. That's crazy yeah, like to really reference yeah. that. Yeah, that's yeah, just, right. <laughs> he literally yeah. had Bell's palsy. It literally sounds like a dick. Like, I'm like, <laughs> just, just, just throwing shade yeah. or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, hey, that's why you got hepatitis B. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. It's just it's crazy. so dude. random and crazy to say. No. <laughs> You would have got dog walked if the dude was healthy. So that being said, Randall coming back to the team makes the team worse. Yes. Destroys chemistry. Them losing Hardenstein, which, my goodness, that dude was like Frankenstein. He was out there killing him. Losing him is a key part of what they needed to do to keep their strength. Then on top of that, Thibodeau has never won anything. And his teams do, after ascending, break down the next year. So when they get into the top two or three seed, the next year they'll probably be a four or five seed. And guess what? He runs his team into the ground. He breaks their heart. Joe Kim Noah gave a great story in one of the podcasts out here. And he mm -hmm. said he remembers driving in to practice because he was like, I always get there early because I like to get up shots. He's like, I remember every time for a year I drove into practice and Kyle Corver was just sitting in his car. No music on, no nothing, just <laughs> blank staring out the window because he just hated having to go into practice because the practice. Oh, shit. Yeah, I heard Monday that. Monday morning. And, I know I'm, that and, I'm, and I'm, like, crazy. I'm like, that's insane. And that's what you get with Thibodeau. He's never won anything. He won his assistant coach because he wasn't allowed to dog walk everybody and run, their, Ooh, run them into yes. the ground. And he had so all the all-famers on the yeah. team. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is what he does. He runs people into the ground. He wears them down. And without Hardenstein and bringing Randall back, they're going to have to move him or trade him because he doesn't fit. I feel like they got worse. And as much as I am annoyed about Paul George, the Sixers are better. Yeah. I also don't care if they're the third seed and we're the fifth seed and we got to go there. Because right. I'll be completely honest with you. They're so close. Their fan base is so annoying and they overpay for everything. Their life is expensive. So I fully expect to not have a home field, home court advantage either mm -hmm. way. Because they're going to travel down here. They're going to travel well. But again, 
Joel and B being healthy, it, I don't think, bring your mom down here, bro. Yep. I give a hand <laughs> sandwich. What you gonna do? You Joel and B healthy? You're not beating the 76ers no. with anything that you have right now. I don't even know what the rest of the roster looks like. Again, I'm down on my team and I'm annoyed about the way it is, but I'm not stupid. I know we could beat the New York bitch ass Knickerbockers <laughs> any day of the week. Okay, so it is what it is. If you're a Knicks fan, again, go fuck yourself. I Jeez. appreciate you being in the tri area. You're not really terrible people, but you're Knicks fans. And so, as far as I'm concerned, you suck. I saw the thing where they came down here and I saw that dude in the wheelchair rolling back and forth over Sixers flag. I'm like, that's the scummiest shit because I can't bust on a, a, a handicapped person. But at the same time, you disrespected us by oh, that's, you know, it's about, to be, about to be Crips and Bloods out here against the head. That's about to be. <laughs> That got me so bad because I'm like, I can't even the man's in the I can't do all oh, he but he's being disrespectful. Mm. So yeah, fuck you Knicks, fuck you Knicks fans, fuck New York, fuck New York, fuck, fuck New York. <laughs> Bing bong. <laughs> I, I, apologize. <laughs> I apologize. I might feel some sort of way about the Bell Palsy. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. what it is. Um, now, uh, let's, let's just roll to the Bucks. Are you worried about the Bucks at all, Harry? That's that's. I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not, honestly. I just feel like Dame and Giannis, I mean, there's just weird weird vibes there. I guess there could be some sort of like resurgence for them or something in the right, beginning of the season that makes me think, okay, this team looks completely different. But they still got Doc, right? So, I mean, you know, there's a, there's a lot of reasons to not believe in them. Uh, I think they don't have a lot of shooting. They don't have – I mean, Brooke Lopez is getting older. They're depending on these guys that, you know, is it going to work this time? I don't think so. So, again, Dame, I think he's losing a step, you know, each year. Maybe not a huge – step but and then part of it had to do with the coach and the change and all that stuff last year but um yeah i just don't believe in the bucks i don't think Giannis really like he doesn't have the same feel with that team that he had when they won he doesn't feel like he like he's bought in totally so not worried about the bucks jason is glenn river still coaching the bucks <laughs> yeah, yeah. why the hell would we ever be worried about that? <laughs> there's no team that's gonna flame out faster than the bucks with that sorry coach yeah like there's no more to even talk middleton's old now he does he's, he's oh, not yeah. a third option anymore you can't count on him dane they might be good, but Dame can't guard me or you. <laughs> they, were, they were 30 and six before Glenn took over. <laughs> they went 30 and 30. Like, yeah, they, like, like, come on, bro. He said, you know, come he didn't have on. the preseason to figure it all out. Like, yeah. well, you had a whole half a season. Yeah, half Weren't you the advisor to the team yeah. or something yeah, like that? <laughs> like, you had to figure it figured out before you got there. Yeah. It was figured out. Just. Yeah, was, that's, that's a good point. You could have just kept doing the same thing. It, it, it seemed really figured out. You know what I mean? <laughs> you are the only denominator that changed everything. You are the fuck up. You are the loser. Again, glad I pat myself on the back because I told everybody losing his coach in, in NBA history. But, yeah, he's going to come <laughs> here to six and do something. And that's why I got to call him Glenn his whole career. Yeah. No respect. For Glenn Rivers. But I'm more worried about one of the younger teams ascending than I am the Knicks or the uh, Bucks. Are you running this show today or am I running this show Man, today? I'm trying to talk. Shut up and wait till I get there. <laughs> so, Jason, are you worried about the new, uh, 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 the Orlando Magic? Orlando Magic. Oh. Orlando Magic are going to be better. They, you know, they added KCP from Denver, which helps them spread the floor a little bit more after they screwed up the Jet Howard pick last year. I don't know why yeah. they wasted a draft pick on him, even though he's Jawan Howard's son, Michigan, you know, whatever. I mean, nepotism, nepotism, like, nepotism. But, yeah, well, nepotism. You know, <laughs> but uh, no, yeah, they're not going to be good enough yet, but they are definitely on the rise. They just paid Jonathan Isaac a ton of money, another guy who's constantly hurt, but when he's out there, he's just locked down on the wings. So they'll be up there. They should be a four or five seed, them in Cleveland. Um, why, why do you think they didn't go after Paul George? I don't think Paul George was going to go there, even though I think he should have gone there if he really wanted to try and win. I, I think it's the exact reason why he didn't go there. Because if he would have went there, the pressure would have been trem tremendous because he would have been the elder statesman. He would have been more responsible. You come here to Philadelphia, everybody blames more than blame and beat. And then Paul George's like, well, I was out here doing my best. I did what I could. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So there's less pressure, even though there's a lot of pressure in Philadelphia. Yeah. And you still get that max money. Um, Harry, you, you like the magic? You worried about the magic? I'm not worried about the magic because again, we it, it's all Joel's health. Everything's Joel's health. He's he's moshing that team if he can, you know if we see them and he's healthy. So I'm not worried about them. But I do like them as a team. I do like Paolo. Yeah. I think he's a good player. I think their roster they're building is nice. Franz Wagner's you know a, a nice player as well. So you know I, I like that. I like what they're doing. Um, did they, did they bring back like Steve Clifford or something like that? Who was oh, that? Was Charlotte? I think I'm, I'm mixing up. But either way, I, I like I like the, the direction they're headed in. I like the fight they had in the playoffs last, you know, this past season. That was really exciting to watch them. They had some of the most entertaining games in the whole playoffs, like their series. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I'm a I'm a I'm a low key fan a little bit. So um, I'm not going to let us talk about the Pacers. I'm just going to say this: 
The Pacers give the Sixers problems because they play fast and they're a really good, solid team. In the playoffs, they lucked out because they got to go up against people that were injured and then they had injury problems themselves. In the playoffs, they look like a totally different animal because the game slows down and the thing that made them the strongest goes away in the playoffs. So I'm not worried about the Pacers at all, so I don't even want to spend any more time talking about that. I just wanted to put that out there because that's just a general fact of how they're going to be. They're going to look really formidable during the regular season, but in the playoffs, I feel like we could get them again if we're healthy. Now let's talk about the last person in the East Conference, and we're going to swing over to the West. The fucking Celtics <laughs> championship, and Jason Tatum is not a finals MVP, not Eastern Conference finals MVP, because he's a loser, a douchebag, and a poser, and he's an embarrassment to basketball society as a whole. That team, are you worried about them, Harry? Are you worried about the Celtics? Yes, I'm fucking worried about that team. They are stacked, oh, bro. Oh, wait, breaking news, breaking news. <laughs> I was going to say, you got some. <laughs> Thank you, BG. Oh, no, okay, you, you a week too late now. Not, not thanks. Was it delicious? Tell the people. Did, did, did. Were you about to leave your man for me? I mean, I'm trying to I'm trying to do some journalism here, Kate. Okay? Uh, get late and drop a thanks for the spaghetti. I'm used to getting a Facebook DM message. <laughs> I'm trying to, oh, my bad. I expect more from you, Kate. You hurt my feelings. You hurt my heart, okay? Just Breaking you news, gotta, BG is banned from my house. Just, for the rest of <laughs> banned from spaghetti, you making spaghetti. You in your home and you happy and all that. Kind of you, you best to be tempted. You oh best to God. be tempted. That spaghetti and meatballs was delicious, woman. Delicious. <laughs> Make you leave your family. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. Breaking news. I had to break uh, news. Harry. Uh oh. Now you got me restart talking about this damn team. Okay. Oh yeah. Fuck the Celtics. I am worried about them. Drew Holiday is amazing. Derek White is amazing. Oh, come, back, come, back, well, come back, Harry. I did it. I did it. That's funny. Come back. Oh, so now you can talk about the Celtics. <laughs> oh. To, all right. First, you want to talk about the owner? Or you want to talk about just the team? Where, where do we want to go first? The well. Oh, oh shoot! Well, wait for the ownership. We're just talking about the team. Right. We'll wait for Harry to get back. So yes, ownership. the Celtics are still the beast of the East. There's nothing we could do right now with them. They're deeper on the wings. They're they got better scores. They got guards that can defend all over the place. Their bench is better. Like, and they're younger. It's just they have everything. Like, we just hope Paul George can be close to Jalen Brown. And I don't even think we're gonna get that. So yeah, the Celtics are gonna continue <laughs> to be an issue for uh, for a while. I assume. Harry, the, the Celtics team. Are you you worried about the Celtics team? Do I sound crazy? Yeah, no, you're, you're, good. you're good. Okay, okay. Uh, yes, I'm very worried. I mean, again, this when they got Drew Holiday, like that was just I was just like, why? Why did Bucks are you doing this to the whole East? Like the whole East, they're not just doing it to themselves; they're doing it to us, everybody else. Again, I think they're just a really, really good roster. My thing about them is they're still have a lot ton of size, and I think you know all year people were talking about how they didn't want to see us if Joel was healthy. So you know, again, Joel being healthy. I'm, I'll go to war with Joel healthy against the Celtics, but they are a stack team and they're going to probably, you know, be the one seed again this year. How, how can they afford? I don't know. 900, was it almost a billion dollars? <laughs> they're, they're paying everybody. How can they afford everybody? I don't know. I, I don't care about the money, but how can they afford it? How can we get somebody from the front office of the Celtics to come and work for the 76ers? The cutest thing that happens in, media which per 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 permeates to people on twitter and in my comments on instagram and uh tiktok well the warriors wanted paul george so you obviously don't know shit if that championship <laughs> organization wanted him then what do you know you know nothing and i say i know everything okay <laughs> the warriors in their championship era was built by jerry west and then his disciples oh, yeah. and then when they let the other guy go and they brought in Levy, that's when you get the Jordan Poole contract. That's when you get the Jordan Poole trade away. Yeah. That's how you lose. Bob Myers is the guy. Who Bob wins. Myers, thank you. That's how you lose um, Clay Thompson because you fumbled that a little bit and now you lost a little legacy player. That's how you don't get anything in return for it. That's how you lose um, uh, PG. Uh, not PG. CP. CP. That's how you lose him and not get anything in return for it because back when they were winning – 
back when they had the credibility that I'm saying the same thing about Paul George, there was a different person in charge making those decisions. So coming to me now and trying to give credit to this legacy organization and say, well, they wanted them. Yeah, the new dumbasses wanted them. <laughs> the new morons that are making mistake after mistake after mistake for the last three years after they lucked up and got a championship. They want him. They're not the same as the Warriors that were swindling Kevin Durant to come play there and making all the right moves with their ancillary players and their bench. It's not the same and if you knew better and if you knew basketball and if you had a photographic memory and you were more of an asshole like me you would know better than to say the dumb <laughs> things that you say like well the warriors want to pull during so you're an idiot okay go fuck yourself now the Celtics, <laughs> i hate them with all my heart I, again be uh... one of their gms i just I, I just i hate boston i hate all of boston i know i said new york it is you know what I'd marry New York and everybody in it. And I'd <laughs> off the bills before I fucking help anybody from Boston hanging <laughs> off of a cliff. I'd let them all fucking fall slowly in slow motion so they can live the pain of their life dying fast. <laughs> I hate fucking Boston. So uh, I take a GM, I take somebody from that disciple or somebody from that <laughs> any day of the week because they all know what they're doing. They've, been trained, by, they've been trained by Danny Ainge. So <laughs> their owner, the Celtics are selling. Mm-hmm. Anybody buying? Somebody will buy it. It's gonna be worth a ton of money, but that owner is a genius. What do he do? What he's like? You get paid. You get paid. You get paid. Not by me. Yeah, right, right. right. <laughs> yeah, I'm not cashing the check, but oh. I'll sign him for now. Well, like, I mean, I'm just sitting here thinking to myself, like, I, if I was Josh Harris, I'd put together a group, go by the Celtics, yeah. trade all the See players. If they, what if they could just, <laughs> you know. I mean, I, do, 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 I mean, well, the owner wants to be out. The Celtics owner is just trying to get paid and go live on his yacht, and and yeah, he got his ring and he's good to go. Yeah, he got he got it. Yep. He built he built his bunker or somewhere. He's ready to go. Yeah, I mean, they're gonna live off this ring for the next <laughs> what 10, 20 years. So hopefully, as long as KG and them live off that one ring they got in 08. Yeah, hey, like, hey, they will. They will. Hey, we're we're, we're rabbit ninety nine. The title of the show is <laughs> Sixers versus Everybody. You know what I mean, yeah. <laughs> Hate on my team. You can't hate on my team. The you hate on my team. Right? Go fuck yourself. Yeah, Warriors. Got some. Hey, look, That's look. not the Northeast. That's right. <laughs> true, true, true. So, um, yeah, it's the Celtics, again, just trash panda organization, clown card in this Tatum. Congratulations. You guys suck. Now, let's move over to the West. Real quick, before we can we say in the East for one more team that's just hilarious? Go ahead. The Bulls trying to just oh. give away Zach Levine. Plus, like, do you want to? We will give you a pick. And everyone is like, we are good. <laughs> like, and the, we do not want that contract. And the worst part about that is, is again, I know, Jason, I know you remember it. You mm-hmm. can confirm it. Yeah. Before, when you were doing all these things, when Ben Simmons was falling apart, I was like, yo, go give me Zach Levine. He's mm-hmm. somebody that can put up mm-hmm. points. And it's just fucking before you got paid, before yeah. you had that crazy contract. And what do people do? They laughed at me on the internet. Oh, you're stupid. You don't know nothing. Two years later, man, we should really try to get Zach Levine instead of hard. We really need one. No, Zach Levine's getting paid a billion dollars now. Yeah. What do you mean you want Zach Levine now? Oh, now you want Zach Levine. You laughed at me. So again, I'll be right. Y'all be wrong. Yeah, I mean, I'm from the future. Uh uh, shout out to my boy Caruso. That's all I wanted. That's all I, I wanted him bad, man. It's all I ever need to say. Yeah. <laughs> I need a white boy. I need. He might, a, be, he might be better fit than PG. He might do because he might play more D and shoot more threes. Oh, 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 tell you what, you bring the <laughs> show to Philadelphia. George W is about. He's yeah. been conference at the minimum. Uh, 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 stock is high, my guy. Stock is I high. Mean, we need a white boy. I, I agree. Jason is against the Caucasians. <laughs> Jason is anti-Caucasian when it comes to best uh, Euros. But I, hey, look. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wouldn't read Shepard in the draft, but that you know that I knew that was never going to happen. Well, uh, um, like. so uh, shout out to um, Justin from Tennessee. We were texting because he's like, "Oh, the Eagles, not the Eagles, the Sixers should have got Connect." Yeah, and I'm like, I to myself, the only reason I want to connect is because I want more size. McCain's fine. We're, we're going to talk about that again later. But like yeah. I said, but I want to connect because I wanted that 6'6". I wanted that big frame. I wanted somebody with a little bit more size instead of having the smaller backcourt when yeah. those two do happen to play together. Yep. But he's like, he's like, he was a, he's a top five, blah, blah, blah. And I had to like, yo, bro, he's not top five. He went 17 overall. You are where, you are what you're drafted at. Because he's 23 years old. That's why he was so good in college. It, like, it, <laughs> The, the, exactly. You're at that point. You're a full grown man, bodied up against boys. Yeah. And again, oh, yeah. uh, we'll talk about it. McCain wasn't that far from rebounds, and he's 
four inches shorter because mm-hmm. that's about hustling hard. That's about go get it. That's about want yeah. to. That's about know how. That's about why I said, like, I know that Paul George is not James Harden. But in general, they're really close. They're closer to being similar than they're farther of being apart at this point at their careers is my point. Earlier in their careers, I would have said, yes, James Harden, offensive weapon, uh, Paul George, Swiss Army knife, more defense, all that kind of stuff. But now at this later state, they're closer to being similar than they are being farther apart. Um, the Western Conference, uh, who are you worried about, Jason? Oh, OKC is probably the best team in the league right now after getting Hartenstein and Caruso. They were already uh, pretty much a complete team, but they lacked size when uh, Chet would have go against a big guy and they struggled to rebound. Now they had Hartenstein and you know Caruso is going to go get rebounds. And he's gonna lock people up. He's gonna along lock with uh, they the got torture chamber, the torture chamber. Yeah, that's crazy. Going Dort, man, they're just locking yeah. people up. They need uh, was it Jalen Williams? J Dub, yep. First one, right? Because there's two of them yeah. on OKC. Yeah. I think number one's the one that's the good one. But yes. either way, and Shade, like they're they should be the one seed again in the West. Easily. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy how how did OKC get all that weaponry? Who did oh. they trade? Well, when they when they did Paul their George. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Who was it? Oh. Paul oh, George, oh, probably. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I can't imagine the Clippers are hating and kicking themselves over. Oh, that. they swindled. They, they didn't happen. Did they take Shea in that yeah. trade? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. They did. <laughs> yeah. Uh, because yes, they did. Glenn Rivers said, said he, didn't want, he wasn't that good. Yeah, he's not that good. <laughs> he won't so, develop. <laughs> he won't develop. So, uh, Harry, who, who do you think is who do you think the, the top two teams are the problem in the West you got to worry about? Top two. I mean, that's interesting. I feel like the, the the Nuggets are my three. I think they feel a little bit desperate right now. Kind of the like Nuggets are falling off for me. The Nuggets yeah, that, are there's there's off. reports that Jokic or the Nuggets, maybe not just Jokic, but that they want Russ. And I'm just like Russ, like Westbrook to the Nuggets. Like how does that? I don't know how yes. that fits at all. Um, so yeah, that's weird to me. So they dropped off. I'm gonna go T Wolves and OKC for sure. So as far as Westbrook is concerned. Westbrook gets such a bad rap and it annoys me to no end because when he was with the Lakers, he was one of the only ones playing and hustling when yes, Le- yes. LeBron was injured and um, um, AD, AD, right. Anthony Davis was injured. Yeah. He was out there hustling. And for the Clippers, he was going out there and giving them solid minutes off I the like, bench. Yeah, I like his minutes control, on the Clippers. And he also gives attitude. The, the Nuggets need somebody with a pulse. They're right. very happy-go-lucky. Gordon yeah. tries to be the tough guy, but nobody's afraid of him. Right. Nope, nobody's worried about him. He's not aggressive enough. He's annoying, but he's not aggressive. So he might say, look, I need somebody who can kind of like facilitate, score a little bit, uh, but will hound people. Like, you know what I mean? Like a, a, a legitimate Patrick Beverly type that can actually do something on a given night. So I, I, I hate not that PJ we... Tucker. Not PJ right. Tucker. Exactly. I just, but I'm just saying like that you're making arguments like that. I'm like, okay, where is all this uh, like detective work to find the, the positives for like the Sixers? You know what I mean? Like you're, you're doing, you're making points that people would make to, to, to justify Westbrook being good on the team. I'm not trying to say Westbrook is terrible or stuff like that. I'm not trying to call him Westbrook. You know but I'm just saying is? what? You know the difference is? Because Westbrook is the type of player the same... And, and, and Jason knows this about me, too, because we, we've argued about this. I, my love for TJ McConnell. How, how high is it, Jason? Very high. Very high. And, and, and why is that? Because he fucking fights all the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. He knows that he's not Shaquille O'Neal, but he's out there playing like he's prime Shaquille O'Neal. He's giving you maximum effort. So when I look at Westbrook, he gives me that all right, the of course, time. Of course, of course, of course. When I look at Paul George and I see how he plays, I don't feel that from him. I know. I wasn't trying to make the, that comparison, though. I'm no, just no, trying no. to I'm, say, I'm yeah. That's why it sounds like right, when, of course. when I go to bat for somebody, I'm going to bat for the attitude, which I is why you. I like Patrick Beverly so much. Like, I know yeah, yeah. that he's not, but I also know he's an actual dog. I know right. he's somebody who will have your teammates back. He will go out there and not let Joel get pushed around or undercut or something not going against him. So there's certain guys like that that I will go to bat for. And not for nothing, the Joker is – uh, the the white Embiid, just one of the greatest centers that we have in this league, but he's also healthier and he plays all the time. Mm-hmm. He, he doesn't, you know what I mean? So it's like that. That's why I'm, I was fighting for that, but it, it's not. Yeah, yeah. I just mean like I don't see that Westbrook like giving them these intangibles that like okay, yeah, maybe the perfect version of the perfect fit in the perfect year. Like then I'd put them back up there. I don't know. I just more. I'm not saying that even you were making that argument. I'm not even saying no, that. No, no. I, I, I'm just. I, I know what you're saying. Yeah. It, again, the way the reason it feels like that. Is because I go off of what that person emulates to me. Right. 
I'm, Russ I'm will be in the second unit with this team now, though. Yeah, like, right. If he cool. plays like he did with the Clippers, you know what I mean? Like, I then I feel better about it, you know, for sure. If but you, now, if you told me he needed to be your starter, I'd be like, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. Like, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> I mean, what are we doing? Like, they would be the doing? fifth seed. <laughs> I don't yeah, know. If you, so, yeah. exactly. So, um, but OKC is definitely number one. They have gotten so much better. Yeah. I do not. I, I, I and they're going to get better. Their players are young. They're all going to get better. Like literally, just the individual players they already had. It's crazy. And, uh, they can still the, trade for somebody. The, yeah, the, they still. Yeah, the picks are crazy too, right? They still have Anthony. Anthony Edwards is Michael Jordan. Oh whoa, he had a bad game, and now he's tired. He's he could never. Be, y'all were calling him Michael Jordan, bitch. Y'all were the ones calling him Michael Jordan. You, <laughs> I was not. Not, not. not you. I'm talking about the yeah. pundits. The pundits fun. were the ones that were saying it yeah. for four straight weeks. Cool dunk. And then, when he fell short as the team did, it's like, well, he can't be. Like, Bitch, you're the one who said it. Yeah. <laughs> he literally sat there and was defending Joel Embiid and LeBron James saying, hey, these guys are great. You put them up so high, and then when something bad happens, you want to tear them down. He right. was really speaking for himself. I know, oh, yeah, I, yeah. I, know I jumped on him like, oh, he's, he's, for, uh, right. he's speaking for Embiid and speaking for LeBron, but he's literally saying, like, look, I know y'all going to do this shit to me, so <laughs> just let me play ball. I'm, yeah. I'm the young kid on the block. So I think that the, that experience of the playoffs is going to make them better. Oh yeah, and, and, gonna and they're going to have that huge leap, and they have confidence going. And um, you know, uh, that that's the, those Ooh. are the two I'm worried about. Real quick, out. real quick, real quick, Robin, pose this. So I think like I'm wondering now, Anthony Edwards, right? He really understood what it felt like to play like playoff defense and offense, right? Two ends. I think you guys think he's going to come back next year, like in some crazy shape, potentially. I feel like that if he does come back in like some, you know, low body fat, like looking, looking leaner, I feel like this could be a crazy year for them. Cause that, that might be, that might be yeah. my fault to cut you off. He's no, you're good. An Olympic boost playing with those guys. When those guys go over mm. there, they all work together and they, you know, you learn how LeBron works. You learn how, uh, yeah, Kawhi will be there. I don't know. You know, Kawhi doesn't really show up for stuff, yeah. but you know, guys like that, younger yeah. kids get to learn off of those guys and learn what it really, really takes to win. So he might get that and come back with that too. That's a great point. I I think that what they need to do is learn how to win in game five or six instead yeah. of taking all your yeah. series to game seven. Because if they would have stayed away from that, I think he would have been fine. That is a lot for any team because. It's just harder to win that way for anybody to do it, especially yeah, yeah. when you're dealing with like nagging injuries and things like that. And he didn't seem to complain about it, but you can see like towards late in, in that last series, he was laboring. And and I think the matchup got him too. Dallas the matchup, was yeah, the opposite of Denver, which is who Minnesota was built to be. It exactly. just killed them because exactly. it was a totally opposite matchup. And how often yeah. do you go against two teams that are direct opposites of one another? Exactly. Yeah. And him so. and McDaniel's like felt like they were just hounding, you know, the Nuggets, which they were, and then all of a sudden it's Luka and Kyrie like just moving yeah. the you the way they want you to move. So And and it seems like none of us have the the Mavericks going back. They're I was going to say part. nobody mentioned that, right? Clay signing and that's, you know, is that enough? Like Clay, he was he was what terrible last year. So I can't really look at that as like a great. I assume you know. Clay Thompson is washed. Yeah, he's been washed for at least you know this 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 past season. You know, he's obviously so. not you know the second best shooter in the league or anything like that anymore. But I did read a thing where they said he had like a two week stretch where he shot like twenty percent from three, and which that, counts. Yeah, but so I'm not going to say like oh if you take it away, but if you did hypothetically yeah. like he was still up there above forty two percent shooting from three. Yeah, and, uh, I won't lie. For the right money, I would have taken him as a fourth guy on the Sixers. Oh, for I, I was saying, I texted my brother. I texted my brother saying, I was like, "Yo, Clay's still out there." Like, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't hate that. I mean, again, I think with Luca being able to facilitate, be so ball dominant, Kyrie being ball dominant, he can spot up a lot, and uh, that should be great for Clay. So it's definitely an addition for them. They are be better. But at the end of the day, Luca hasn't been healthy for a single playoffs yet either. Talking about Embiid, right. so it's like you know he's got to be healthy. And I think the Mavs with Lively got their big man. I think Lively's the big guy. Yeah, great point, great point. And he was he was starting to shoot a little bit uh, towards the end of the year too. And his jumper doesn't look broke. So if he can be that real legit guy, that might be another leap. So we're we're gonna swing back to the Sixers in the draft. But first, I want to talk about the most important pick at fifty five that the NBA has ever seen in their life. Yeah, um, Michael Porter Jr. I think was the 55th pick in the draft. 13th pick. 13th pick. No, no, no. I'm, I'm, there's too many Porter Juniors. There's too many Porter Juniors. I mix up the Michael Porter Juniors. Yeah, there's there's a there's a junior that's the only 55th pick in the draft that's mattered in the last 30 years. There's only one player that you, if I named him, I can't remember his name, that's because it doesn't matter. Yeah. It's been somewhat relevant. So that pick doesn't matter. But this year it mattered because that guy's getting interviewed like he was the number one pick. Of the oh, year. yeah. It is uh, LeBron James Jr. Bronny 
is a, a Laker. Oh, I found a good fifty uh, fifth pick, by the way. Uh, who? Patty Mills. Patty Mills. Oh, Patty Mills. Patty Mills. That's what it was. I was, I was better than Brownie. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking quarter, and then uh, some of the, anyway, Patty Mills. That's what Patty it was. Patty Mills. Because uh, I went down the list, and I'm like, I don't know who any of these people are. And I was like, Oh, shoot, Patty Mills. That's a, that's a steal, Patty Mills. Yeah, yeah that, there you <laughs> Popovich, go. Popovich, so, Jesus, yeah, exactly. But um, so Harry, how do you feel about uh, uh, Bronny James getting drafted to the Lakers? How'd that make you feel? Listen, part of, part of the world now that I don't that doesn't work well with me and my ADHD brain is like people talk about the same stories forever, and it's like so I feel like I already have felt this a little bit right for a long time. It's been talked about for so long. I knew it was going to happen. Of course it happened. Blah 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 blah. Whatever. But that being and for LeBron's whole life too, when he was 18 coming to the league, you're like, there's a chance he's got a kid. Like there's a chance, right? Um, we all knew about that. So on some level, it's like, okay, finally it's over. But also, it's very cool. It's very cool that this is happening. Like LeBron playing with his son. Again, I don't give a fuck that it's the Lakers and it's LeBron signing his son, whatever. I don't love that like they just have to lie through their teeth about all the reasoning and stuff. It's like, oh, we we were, you know, never planning on doing this, whatever, whatever. And it's like Rich Paul is calling around telling everybody he's going to Australia if you draft him. So it's like, okay, what's all this press conference bullshit? But I don't really care about that so much because it is very cool. And I'm excited. Again, I'm happy for like LeBron does have a great family. He has been a very present father as far as we all know and everyone in his, his you know children's lives. And that's so cool to see. It, it's kind of also cool to see them like dabbing up at the uh, press conference. Like, okay, this professional dynamic. You're not hugging your dad, stuff like that. Um, it's just cool. It's just very cool. I'm happy for Bronny. Uh, I, I hate the Lakers. So, you know, again, this is as positive as I'll, as I'll be about it. But it is cool to see. Jason. Uh, one of the coolest moments growing up as a kid was watching Ken Griffey Jr. and Ken Griffey Sr. go back to back, hitting home runs in the same game, you know, and going after each other and watching those two play together in the dugout and all these things going on and the way they would, uh, you know, interact on the bench and all those things. So it, it's going to be awesome, man. Like, I, I don't really like the way Clutch went about it, the process of it. But as far as the pick, everyone complaining that it was nepotism, all that should just shut up. Of course it is. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Giannis has two of his brothers in the league because of that, right? Uh, Jalen Brunson's dad's a coach on the Knicks, I'm pretty sure, right? Yes. Yep. Yeah, yeah, this stuff, that's how it works, man. Just because none yeah. of us can pull that off. That's just how the league works. Who cares about that? Yeah. Austin Reeves. Rivers. The Rivers. Rivers. <laughs> Austin Reeves is LeBron's other child. Yeah, so I'm sorry, I'm sorry, <laughs> Unless you were going to say Austin Reeves is going to no, lose no, the no, spot no, to Brunson. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I saw a picture that in my mind. I see it right now. It's LeBron James and uh, Reeves, and then it's Connect and Bronny Jr. Right. And I was like, yo, <laughs> I love America. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, you, you brought up the uh, Ken Griffey Jr. It, this is like the greatest thing that ever happened in the NBA because there's so many uh, – Kenny Martin Jr., um, Curry, the Wardell family, um, father-son duos, you know, Clay Thompson's father um, – Lance uh, Jr., like his dad. Yeah, yeah. Like, there's so many father-son tandems and legacies in and the there's NBA. There's more on the way, by the way. Oh, they're, oh, yeah. they're, they're all yeah. going crazy. Oh, my God, Harry, you're starting to crack up. Yeah, because uh, go, Melo's go, kids on the go, way. Come Gilbert Arenas' kids, kids on the way. Like, there's some stud young guys coming up. And and it's it's so cool because, again, it's happened throughout the history of the league. Yeah. But to step foot on the court with your son while you're playing. Yeah. Shows your level of greatness. The only other player that probably could have got away with it was Dirk. Uh, maybe Kobe if he would have started his family earlier. Mm -hmm. And um, um, Half Man, Half Amazing. Uh, well, half, uh, uh, Vince Carter. Vince Carter. Um, he, he, he played long enough yes. to where he could have done it too. So to be able to step foot on the court with your child is such an awesome feat. And to yeah. be one of the game's goats, it's like, okay, you want to talk to me about nepotism? I'll just speak directly to ownership. Mm -hmm. The Lori family is his son in line. Okay. Yeah. Jerry Jones is his son in line. Mm -hmm. Okay. The the Lakers themselves, the great Mr. Dr. Buss, <laughs> had three children, two loser sons. He tried to give multiple companies and chances to. They had no care wherewithal about the team. Jeannie was the only one worth of salt, and he still went above her to give it to his sons because of nepotism and legacy. Jeannie. And Jeannie came <laughs> back and saved it. 
Like she she cared. And she I mean she hasn't done a great job, but she's done a better job than the brothers did when the brothers were yeah. running to the ground. So I don't care about nepotism. It yeah. doesn't matter. If you at your job right now making fries at McDonald's, you're a regional manager, don't try to get your child a job. You're a scumbag. How many of you <laughs> losers have a father and son job that your father let down to you, but you were such a piece of shit father that now your son doesn't want to go anywhere near a toilet because he thinks you're an asshole because you <laughs> fucked up as a parent. Don't be mad at LeBron James because his son wants to play basketball and run his footsteps, and then his other son's going to do the same damn thing. It is greatness. It is the goat. They are lions, and my goodness, I love to see it. Like I said, Ken Griffey Jr., that was one of the greatest things I've ever seen in my life. You know what I mean? Le- LeVar Ball, people clown this dude. He got two of his kids in the NBA, and the other one's full of watch and fucked it all up. But I mean, <laughs> that's a great dad, okay? He went out there, and he did it for his son. And LeBron to be able to play at the same time? Shut up. That is great. <laughs> it is great. I mean, I, like I said, everybody wished their kid when did something that their dad did, and, and finally, like legacy said, they fussed up. He did it. You didn't. Stop hating. Stop being mad. Now, back to the Sixers. <laughs> McCain. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Is it McCain or McCabe? I don't know why I keep going. There's a Jordan McCabe. There is a Jordan McCabe, I feel like, though, also. I'm about to name the show. We fucked up everybody. We don't know <laughs> anybody's name. <laughs> That's the name of the show. The worst yeah. part is we know them. We're just, know. We're We're just, just old. Them. There's, We're there's just definitely a Jordan McCain and Jordan McCabe. Though. There's yeah, definitely two. Right, right. right. You know what I mean? Look, look. I can't Michael Carter me. Porter. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know. No, I don't know any of these damn names. I, I've, I've actually been to I need more juniors. I need more LeBron James I'm, I'm juniors. Never usually good. I don't know. I, I, actually, I do know what's wrong. I didn't go to I didn't go to sleep today until 1230. And I woke up at 430 just so I didn't like so I can try to get back on a regular schedule. So I'm, I am tired. Oh, that, yeah, but that's, it, that's it is the worst. I'm like <laughs> delusional. Uh, that's why I cussed a lot tonight, too, because I'm just like, trying to stay awake. <laughs> hey, I, 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 I took a Red Bull and I had a coffee. Before we did this oh, job. that's why I <laughs> you curse, you're cursing so damn much. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I'm ready to go. But anyway, <laughs> Dot, fuck him up. Back to, back to the game. Um, I, I again, I wanted somebody with more size. Yeah, but at the same time, I like this pick because again, Philadelphia is hard, and Maxie's joy has carried him through the tough times and the down times. Again, he's shown me the fight. The same thing, Harry, what you were saying about how I would go, I was going to bat for Westbrook. I'll do that for for Maxi. When when Embiid was making jokes in the exit interview and Harden was blaming Rivers and Rivers was blaming Harden, Maxie's in that bitch crying like, yo, I, we're fighting. I wanted this. I can't. I, I don't want to go out like that. Like he had tears in his eyes. Okay, you 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 show me that you care. And it wasn't like when Joel Embiid was crying in the hallway, like soft. It was anger. Like I I want this. Like I wanted this. And 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 that's somebody you want to fight for. Now when I look at the McCain kid, I'm like, all right. This dude's already had adversity. Like I said, uh, mm-hmm. I, I made a video. My uh, when I brought him up to my daughter, she's like, "Oh yeah, she's showing me." She's like, "I texted my mom. We were talking to my friend." I was like, "How do you know who this is?" Because she doesn't watch college sports. Right. You know what I mean? She'll watch like women's basketball. She doesn't watch the men. She's like, "Oh, I've been following him uh, uh, before he got drafted by Duke." And I'm like, "How?" Drafted. <laughs> Oh, he, he, I mean, he'd been on TikTok dancing and stuff in high school. He was already popping. And I'm like, that's crazy to me. She's like, oh, I love him. And she's so excited. She's like, I got him. I got Maxie. So she's set. And like, I I looked at the chat, all the girlies was like, ah, (laughs) you know what I mean? So cool, cool. But that shows me too that he's had to deal with this for a long time. He's had to deal with the hate, the negativity, the comments. And uh, he he said today in an interview with Sports Center, he's like, yeah, I I already know what's going to happen. He's like, oh, tell me the headline. Oh, Joel says hit this three. I missed the three, and people want to be throwing up TikToks of me dancing. And yep. I'm like, exactly. That's <laughs> yes, you're right. So are we going to happen? Yeah. So at least <laughs> and you they posted know. it. More sports center did that today. Yep. yep. So, so at least you know, and it is what it is, and that's the kind of thing where again, like that's why I love Jalen Hurts. I said we weren't going to talk about it a lot, but like his demeanor is what you need for Philadelphia. If you want Jalen Hurts to be more jovial, open, and present, then you need to tell Nick Sirianni to be more of an adult. Because I feel like the stark contrast between Nick Sirianni, all this stuff all the time, <laughs> makes Jalen like, all right, bro, calm down. All right, coach, focus. Like, let's let's get it together. And so you can't have everybody run around with their shirt off, swinging around like a helicopter. Somebody has to be the adult, and that's Jalen. And that's the reason, like I said, I like McCain because he is himself. He's being who he is. He's not going to stop, it seems like, and he's not going to let anybody intimidate him. And 
that's the kind of confidence you need to grow in Philadelphia because you will get booed. You will get jeered, but you will also be lifted up on the shoulders and carried about the city if you do and fight for what we want and what we believe that you should do. Mm -hmm. Right? So I, I like the pick. Um, I don't know anything really about the Bona kid. He's 6'8". Uh, not crazy. I don't know. It, that's just a pick where I'm like, if they see something, we're going to see. Because they, they have done well with draft picks. As much as I hate Maury, I will We'll say his regime has done well with younger players, picking up younger guys and then having them um, uh, be on the team as long as we keep them. And uh, Nick Nurse is a, a developmental guy. You know what I mean? He got Flames Elite paid. He got a lot of guys that we didn't know who they were. He got them rolling and got them going. So I do believe that he can help mold the team and 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 guide the young guys and, and find them playing time and find them a role with the Sixers. So that is also positive uh, as though we, we don't have the rest of the team filled out yet. Um, anything on McCain, anybody? Yeah, I mean, I think you said it really well with like that he knows himself and that's the type of thing that that will that will keep him steadfast when the adversity does come here. And it might it might transition like, you know, this goofy, you know, hard, Philly's hard nosed, right, as a city, but we're also goofy and like like to have fun. So if he's just like, I don't give a fuck, like I'm shooting threes, I'm doing TikToks, we're, like we might be doing TikToks and, and doing Jordan McCain dances like halfway through the season. I think it's possible. I can see that sort of yeah. things happening. And on the thing about this draft in general is just that like I don't know how good any of these guys really are. I feel like and that's kind of the question. So again, he could be somebody that comes to the league and he's six two or whatever, but he's seems like relative to his draft class. He is ready to hit big time shots. He's ready to take, you know, those shots in big moments. He's ready to be calm in, you know, stressful situations, anxious situations. That's what it looks like. But I don't know if that's going to be an NBA caliber version of that, like a Patty Mills or something, or it's going to be, I, I don't know, I'm drawing a blank here on his full name, but the Villanova guy, Scotty, whatever, you know, from back in the day. We used to have some guards that were like all American that never made it anywhere in the league. So I think yeah. ultimately that's the question. Is he going to be that or is he going to be an NBA caliber uh, player? And that's the biggest thing I said about like the Brian James 55th pick. Like you never know who somebody's going to be. You, yeah. you, we thought um, Draymond Green was going to be Draymond Green where he got picked. Nobody thought the Joker was going to be what the Joker is. Three-time MVP in the second round. Mm -hmm. No no one thought these things. So, again, I'm not going to say it about Brian James because he's not going to be those things. I'll say that. But you could be a role player. You could score your two points a year and then go get paid and then, again, be a legacy, and it's fine. But um, as far as the Sixers are concerned, I think that the youth movement – I don't. We don't even know what it's going to be. I watched this yeah. draft, and literally, when they went and, and they did a little scroll walk by, if I put up the video, if I didn't get taken out, I'd be like, "It's the Mickey Mouse Clubhouse." <laughs> it's fun inside. All those dudes look like they were eight years old. Oh they, yeah, they look, like, they look like I could take them in a rec league. Like I, <laughs> they look like I could body them in a rec league. Like all their faces just look so young. They're everybody's one and done anymore, except for you know Connect Me, Connect Four. I just want to say Connect Three. I just want to say Connect Four. I want to have the number. I wanted all those things. It was fun. He seems um, like a weirdo to me. Just like that guy. the AK forty seven. Like there's certain things I like. The Caruso. I need a white boy in my life. AK forty seven. That's yeah. That's a good throwback I, there. I, I need a an AR. Well, uh, AR, AR fifteen. Like I need a white boy and I need a nickname. We okay? had TJ. We had TJ. I know, I know. What's my name? Thirteen. P G thirteen. He can't do thirteen. No, he can't. Way off <laughs> P. Mm. Way um, off P. That that's right there for us. Playoff P or way off P. We'll figure it out. So, so real quick, uh, I yeah. didn't get to go up on the draft, right? Yeah. Yeah. So McCain, right? He seems super likable, right? Maxi, super likable. Yeah. The past like a couple of years, we had to watch Ben Simmons, who's mm. an unlikable person. PJ mm. Tucker, unlikable. Harden, unlikable, right? Yeah. But it, at least give us a team if they're not going to win it all day. It's like, man, I really like these guys. They're fun yeah. to watch. You know, because uh, Joel's fun. You're Joel right. Is yeah, fun. Yeah. We he, might have, you know, you, you, Jason. Okay, like, keep talking. Go ahead. This is a right. nice show, boys. This is a nice show. It's some positivity here. McCain, I don't like Duke guys, by the way. No, right? I don't like Duke. Either. Duke guys have failed, but the coach changed, and now like lively mm. from Duke, and now it seems like these guys are starting to maybe produce a little bit more. This kid won in California as a high school player. He was yes. really good at Duke and carried them, I believe, to the Elite Eight. I think. He scored 30 points multiple times. And he's mm -hmm. the first guy the Sixers have drafted in a decade that can shoot before he got here. We don't have to yes. worry about what if he learns how to shoot. That would be awesome if he learns how to shoot. And the, he gets uh, a shot of quick, too. He don't right. Yes, he does. He's no, a legit I, shooter. He's a legit right. shooter. I don't watch – you know, I didn't watch a lot of college basketball either. The Bonaire kid, it's like Paul Reed, but if he knew how to play basketball is what it sounds like. <laughs> under, right? Like yeah. that's what it sounds great. Hey, sounds great. They also signed the best undrafted kid uh, from Kentucky. I just looked at the, Justin Edwards from Kentucky, who was everyone thought was going to go in the 50s. He was going to get drafted. He was like a top 10 recruit from the Philly area. Ronnie took a spot. He might have. Mm. Right? But uh, yeah, but 
You know, it's another <laughs> guy. who knows if he's going to end up being good. You, you never know, right? We don't know if yeah. those guys are going to be those good. Those are good points. Maybe at least they're fun to watch for a little bit. Yeah. So I'll give you that. With, with Joel Embiid at the top of the helm and his triple X, suck it. And That's we still McCain fun, man. That's just so fun. And McCain out there doing TikTok. <laughs> right. And Max is just like, ah, look at him doing the sex thing. And look at him doing the TikTok. And we can laugh at PG. We can laugh at PG. I can do TikToks too, I think. Does he? Not like McCain. Not like McCain. Yeah, well, McCain's a wizard. Oh, and also, and also, McCain can dance. Let, let, let me. Let's. He just does right TikTok now. dances. He just I'm does all the TikTok. He be doing these TikTok dances, and not only does he do them, he can sing. He he be doing he, <laughs> a little he, bit. I know, my God, bro. I was gonna say this, dude. I I don't hate him for being himself, but I hate this. I hate that he just does that bullshit and that he gets money off of that. I hate that. I hate that that exists. Like that, I will. I will tell you, there's something too. We're going down, down in the early round, and sugar, we're going down, swinging. Don't appropriate my culture. Don't appropriate my culture. <laughs> Say it ain't so. You know, oh, we bringing all that shit, man. I'm just saying, when a black person does white stuff, white people just be happy, boy. They oh like, my oh god! My god, you know, Weezer. We're like, I feel seen. <laughs> he knows who Nirvana is. He knows. Who You're talking about white women. I don't know. I don't know any I don't white know men. I about white women. I yeah, I know. I'm just saying. Like, I don't know. I don't know. You said white people. I, I, white people. Uh, run by white women. I ain't worried about you. Yeah, yeah. I'm not to love me out here, okay? You know what I mean? She said, I'm to get Kate to love me. That's yeah, leave our emotion alone. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Kate, come on now. <laughs> you're using it for the clout. That's what you're using it for. <laughs> <laughs> this is the last time I'm laughing. Ah, seen her, seen her. That's good. For yeah. show. So it is what it is. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> we are everywhere yeah. and on point. No, yes. <laughs> so the show's been going on for an hour and 10 minutes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's a Tuesday night. What's the score to Phillies game? Anybody six know? Six to one. Phillies. Six, six to one Phillies? Okay. The Phillies, Top of the eighth. The Phillies are winning. And raise your hand if you're allowed to go to watch a game at <laughs> Citizens Bank Park for the rest of the season. Harry, can you go? Why uh, can I go? I don't no, know. No, you, you were like hesitant. Go. I got yeah, worried yeah, for a yeah, second. Yeah, Wait, yeah, we yeah, just so, do something so bad? We, we, can all, we, can all, <laughs> we can all go to Citizens Bank Park. None of us have been banned from that. So... I mean, it's just journalism. I, I didn't <laughs> write the article. I didn't Kings do the report. Um, uh, Howard Eskin, the dope, the genius, the dummy, the idiot, <laughs> uh, all the classic things that he loves to call people, has been banned from Citizens Bank Park. I don't know if it's indefinitely. Rest I, of the season. Rest of the season. So for the rest of the season, he's been banned for harassment and um Inappropriate contact with an employee of Amtrak. And it's an unwanted advance. Unwanted advance. <laughs> and it's just like, really? You're an old man, bro. Yeah. You got a job to do. And not, not only that, like, not for nothing. If you want to go and put an advance on somebody and you're at the bar and you're drunk and you made a mistake, cool. You're on your job. Mm -hmm. You're doing your job. You've got access to places that normal people aren't, that don't have. You shouldn't even be where you are. Right. You're not a paying customer. You're using media access to access places and then force yourself upon people or force yourself in situations with the power that you have from your job. Yeah. That's creepy. Uh, my favorite comment was, uh, <laughs> he got a weird case. Why is he? What, 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 what? Wow, 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 wow. Oh, my wah, God. Wah, fuck him up. I mean, <laughs> for, for a guy whose son is all about accountability, uh, the radio station has released a comment saying that they've talked to him about it, but they're not taking him off the air. Right. He's still going to do his job. I feel like that's a mistake. I feel like some sort of small suspension yeah. would warrant it. You have women that work at that organization, a lot of lovely women, a, a lot of women who would find this offensive, and I assume find it offensive. And as a male uh, journalist, uh, 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 sports host, whatever it is, they have daughters. I got a daughter. I'm offended by it. At some point, you got to take responsibility for your mistakes and your action. And to come on and to spout the general hate that he does, I'm a negative dude. I'm I'm a Negadelphian. I, I am I am Captain Negative. Like as much as I stuck up for Joe, like I'm positive. Too. I'm a very realistic fan, but I do speak a lot of negativity. So in doing so, if you don't have balance and then you do something like that, well, how is somebody supposed to be positive towards you? How is somebody going to support you if you don't have a history of being positive, upbeat, and supportive, and you've ripped athletes apart to shreds for mistakes that athletes have made about conversations 
oh, he's got to get out of town. He's a bad teammate because he didn't like McNabb. What? T.O. needs to be in a coffin. He needs to die. What? Like your history of vitriol that you spit against players who play a game and do their job. And for you to do something like this, and if for, for this to be your second major incident with a female, I'm not going to mention the other one because that's that's tragic. Very, yeah, tragic. very tragic. I'm not going to make a joke about that because it's very upsetting. You can look that up for yourself. But this isn't your first rodeo in this kind of arena, and that's not a good thing to do. It's not a good thing to be. So <clears throat> as far as accountability is concerned, it seems like they don't have any, he won't have any, and that's just embarrassing and bad. I'm glad the Citizens Bank Park made some kind of accountability stand and said we're going to protect our employees and protect our women. And, uh, again, as a father to a daughter, I would expect at that at the bare minimum is what I would expect. So well said. Yeah. hopefully somebody over there has a little bit more accountability towards that. And with that, I will say this. Harry, I hope that I'm wrong, and I hope that all of your yes. dreams are true. That's all I wanted to hear. Just hope that you're wrong. True, you Harry. I will sit right here and for 32 minutes straight, Harry. 32. I will rip myself to shred. <laughs> I'll practice that. Fat, greedy, you dumb, greasy, bitch. <laughs> now having no breathing. I want to hear uh, more about you being wrong, but yes, that's fine. That's cool. <laughs> I mean, I'm right so much. It's yes, just, I understand. I, no I, I, I hope that I'm wrong, Harry. Right, I hope, right. Right. I hope you say what? Paul George, thanks for choosing me. Oh! oh! <laughs> Oh, oh, my Lord. Oh, oh, shit. You know what? You know what? If we get if if we even get to the finals, yeah. that's going to be the shirt I wear every week for the, for the show. Like, I'll, get, I'll get a Paul George thanks for choosing me shirt. I will rock that bitch. That'll be my punishment. Oh, that, that's a good pull there, Jason. I, I, I listen. I listen. Oh, right? yeah, you, yeah that's, that's some grimy shit, boy. <laughs> I tried to put myself on front street. You're going to just use my word <laughs> again, Bryce. Thank you for choosing me. I love you so yeah, much. Always better. and forever. Um, follow us on the YouTube. Subscribe on the iTunes, the Amazons, the iHeartRadio. We're on all the places now. I done got That's myself right. together. Oh, hey. So go ahead and subscribe somewhere. Tell a friend to tell a friend. If you got somebody that you don't like, send them the podcast and make them suffer the way that you 220 people have suffered watching us live, the way you listeners suffer on Spotify. Make somebody else feel this pain. And if you know somebody <laughs> from New York, definitely clip the part where I said, fuck the nigger fire. <laughs> fuck them. Fuck them. No lube. Yeah, fuck them. Oh. Just send it to them. That's right. If you made it this far, you already know that we've been crazy. I'm, I'm sorry and I apologize. I will lay off the Red Bulls and the crack cocaine. <laughs> I've allowed Harry to come back with his positivity. So I kind of bounced it out a little bit today. Unless they so, sponsor us. So at least, oh, if you sponsor us, oh, <laughs> yeah. we are not getting the sponsor. I apologize. <laughs> yeah. I might have to go through and bleep out this whole <laughs> dang episode and put a whole bloop. Yeah. We hope the 76ers okay. do well. All right. Uh, again, follow us on the internet. We're out there. Uh, appreciate you guys for watching. Have a great night. Say goodbye, guys. Later. Peace.